Hi there and welcome to another Itter Tools video in Python. In this one we're going to take a look at the accumulate function, which is another useful function in the Itter Tools package. So Itter Tools, we're going to import it here as a first step. And what I'm going to do is define a list of numbers. And I've just got this as numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now if I wanted to get a cumulative sum, what I would need to do, and that's basically what, what that means is um, let's see, the first number is 1, and then we add 2 to that. So the first number, be uh, the second number becomes 3, that's 1 plus 2. The third number becomes 3 plus 3, which is 6, and so on. So we're taking, you know, we're keeping a cumulative sum of values here. Um, and what I want to do is, is demonstrate how that's done with accumulate. So the accumulate function, um, what it does is it takes in two arguments. First argument is your iterable. Um, as you can see here, the, the iterable, which in this case is the number list in Python. The second argument is a function which returns the series of accumulated results. Now, by default, it is the sum. Um, so, if I list this out, we get the cumulative sum of the numbers in the list. And like we said up here, we've got 1, we've got 3, we've got 6. Um, and 6 plus 4 is 10, 10 plus 5 is 15, so that's the cu the cumulative sum. Um, but we can actually pass any, to the accumulate function, we can pass any uh, function that we want as the second parameter. So I could say lambda x, y, and we could return the multiply function. And that would take the elements, 1 and 2, multiplied together is 2, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 4 is 24 and so on. So you can actually pass any function you want as a second parameter to accumulate. Um, and just to demonstrate that, we could square each value and add them. And that would give us some crazy numbers here. So that's accumulate. And for completion's sake, you might want to know about this. So I'm going to uh, show you a very similar operation in NumPy. Now NumPy is built uh, for um, numerical arrays and it provides a function called comsum and you just pass in your list in this case of numbers and it will give you back the cumulative sum of those numbers so you can see that that is actually equal to the default case of accumulate which is to add so these are equivalent this one's stored as a python list numpy will return to you a numpy nd array but essentially they are equivalent and um, the, the results at least the elements within each data structure are the same so now I want to show you the, the operator module in Python. Um, this provides some handy functions that you can use to simplify your code. So if I copy this up here to demonstrate cumul uh, the cumulative sum, we can pass as a second parameter the operator.add function. This is a function that's actually built into the operator module and that will give us the same result as above. And if I can copy this, we can also pass operator.mul, which is short for multiply, and we get back the cumulative product. And just to show you that, the NumPy has the, the comprod function, which gives you back that cumulative product as well. So that's how we take cumulative sums and products in Python. Remember that we can pass any lambda function that we like, any normal function that we like, as the second parameter to accumulate. Um, I want to now show you just how to take a running maximum just as another operation. So I'm going to define a list A here and that's set to that value. So iterTools.accumulate, we can take a running maximum of that list A. So we pass in the iterable as the first argument and the function that we're using to do the computation or the running computation is the max function. So that'll give us back an iterTools object which we can convert to a list. And this gives us a running total, uh, sorry, a running maximum of the elements in that list. And what this means is, you see that the first element's three, the second element's one, so the, the running maximum stays three. Third element is seven, that becomes the new running maximum. Next element's two, still seven, and so on. Um, and that gives us, you know, as we iterate through that list A, it is giving us the running maximum as we go through it, so we can track what the maximum is at any given point in the list. And I just want to demonstrate that accumulate can also be used with strings. 
So let's define a tokens list, and this contains C, A, K, and E, which you might know as the word cake. It's tokenized. What I can do is I can essentially, and I'm going to just copy this, I'm going to accumulate these tokens together and I'm going to use the add function. Now the add function with numbers will, will give you the addition, the result of addition. With the tokens, what it does is it accumulates, starts at C, then we add CA, then we add C, the K, and finally we get cake as the final token. So we're cumulatively adding the elements together um, until we finally form the word cake. So that's the way that that's done. Um, another example, I'm just going to copy this again. Um, let's say we had the string ABC in here. And this string can, you know, we can we can call operator.add and, we, you know, it decomposes it. We start with A, we get AB, we get ABC. And that's quite interesting. And we can actually do... Um, Python, I don't know if, if, you, if you know this, but you can do things like this in Python, x times 5, and that will give you 5 characters of x. So we can actually do that within the lambda function that accumulate provides. So we get x and y, what we can do is we can say, let's say x times 2, and then we can concatenate y times 5 to that. And that gives us this, um, this here. We start with a, to that we append two a's, that's the x times 2 plus the 5 times y which gives us 5 b's and then the third time we have this as a starting uh, character which you can see uh, here we do that twice we apply it twice which gives us up to here and then finally the c character is replicated five times so you can do any kind of crazy operations with accumulate and strings as well and finally in this video I want to talk about the functools.reduce function which is similar to accumulate. There is a key difference though. Accumulate will keep around your intermediate results and you can see that up here when you do, for example, the cumulative product here. It's keeping around the results in the middle. What functools.reduce will do is it will reduce the list or the sequence down to a single scalar value. For example, the product would be 120. So let's demonstrate that here. I'm going to import reduce from functools. And if we define uh, our numbers list again down here, um, we've got one to five. And you've already seen this operation, so I'm just going to copy it. And that's when we um, accumulate and we add those numbers together. That's a cumulative sum. What reduce can do is it, can, it takes as its first argument a function and that will be a lambda function, x and y, very similar to the lambda provided by accumulate. And then we can say x plus y, that is the operation. So we're essentially, we're doing a reduction, but we're adding all the elements in the list together. And the second argument to reduce is the actual sequence, which is numbers. So we get 15, so reduce has, that has actually reduced it to a single scalar value, whereas the accumulate function it keeps around the intermediate values but we do get the, fi the same final value with accumulate as you get with reduce so they are quite similar that is pretty much all for this video and if there's any questions or comments then please let me know otherwise thank you for watching and i'll see you soon